Hello, everybody. Welcome back to more Enter the Gungeon Lich Streaks. Ooh, hoo -hoo, excitement. We're on a streak of 285. Let's roll our D8s, who we're going to be today. See who we're going to be. That's great. I, you know, I, <laughs> okay. We'll go with that. We'll go with the three. Wait, three. Three's Gunslinger, yeah? Three's Gunslinger. It's, that one's the kind of tough one, because they're both basically on the same sort of spot. I don't know, man. I don't freaking know. How is everybody doing today? On this fine day, on this extra fine day, double fine day, because uh, Dicey Dungeons came out today, huh? That's, uh, that's pretty exciting. Did you all enjoy? Look at me talking about this. Did you all enjoy the Dicey Dungeons episodes that went out today? People who may not even give half of a darn about Dicey Dungeons. Well, I mean, go check it out. I hate to push you away in the beginning of an episode, but it's such a good game that I just, you know. If you, if you are interested in uh, turn-based deck builder-ish roguelikes, it's a very good game, and I'd put out... Hopefully put out two, <laughs> two episodes of it today. Worth checking out. But anyway, we're playing Mr. Gunslinger, the gunslinging slasher. I, I feel like we just played him a couple episodes ago, but I always say, like, nowadays, that he, he, he lends himself to, you know, absurdity. In a, in a way that's exciting. It, makes, it does make each run, because getting to the point where most runs are, you know... Uh, well, the last 285 runs, at least, have been uh, pretty guaranteed to be victories. There's been close calls, of course, but it makes it so, you know what, yeah, like, just throw me the absurd character. Who cares if he's OP? Like, we could make things extra hard for ourselves by doing XYZ. We, we totally could. And maybe we will throw it something in at some point, but then it'd be like, here's the thing, like, okay. What, I do one episode, I get to 300, and then I'm like, okay, let's do, let's do Turbo High Curse. Or something, you know? I could, I could do it, but then like, okay, what if I, if I lose on 300 because we just switched it to something completely different? It would just feel kind of, I don't know, it feel kind of lame to me, to be honest. In my honest opinion, so. That being said, I probably won't play Turbo. I, I don't know. I don't, there's something about it. Yeah, I do like, I, I would like the runs to be shorter in, in this game. I talk about it a lot. I like it. I like a, a compact, more compact roguelike. I like Dicey Dungeons usually done in about 30 minutes. No, uh, we, we, <laughs> we don't need to, we don't need to do that all day. But, uh, but hell, I could. It, it's very good. Like, rarely do, and, and this is a topic we can talk about today in, in, in length that's not just about Dicey Dungeons, but... Uh, rarely does a new roguelike come out that hits that nerve, that hits that that little point of being, all right, this is one of the ones that's going to be in a lot of people's top fives. I think Dicey Dungeons is going to be that. Dicey Dungeons, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely in my top five, right? Like, I, I think it's, it's definitely in my top five. I think it could be in a lot of people's top five, especially people who are more interested in, um, you know, the the turn-based, more strategy side of things. We shouldn't have gotten away with that, I don't think. But I feel like the last one that came out that really I thought would be up there for people, holy moly, is probably uh, Dead Cells, right? Like that that's the last that's the last one I kind of got that vibe about, and it's sort of been a while sort of been a while I guess since I've got that feeling but I think Dicey Dungeons will totally be up there you know made by uh, whoop, made in, in in part by Terry Kavanaugh creator of VVVVV and um, and Super Hexagon it's his foray into the world of roguelikes and it's su it's super cool and I think that yeah, but I can't remember. I, you know, fill in, fill it in if you you got something. But I feel like the last one that really made waves was Dead Cells, Ooh. which because which is a very very good game. Like I I love Dead Cells. Real play more Dead Cells. Okay, probably. Yeah, I will probably. 
I love it a lot. I love that a lot. Mustache, I don't love that a lot. Uh, this might actually be okay with the synergy. Might be okay with the synergy. We'll 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 give it a look. But yeah, I, I'm just I'm struggling. I'm gonna ask this. This is the simplest. Well, maybe not the simplest. It may be hard for people, but maybe one of the most most straightforward questions I've I've asked as of recent, and that's um, what is if you can, if you can only think of a top three, that's fine. If you can only think of a top three, that's fine. Give me your top three, top five, if you can, favorite roguelikes, roguelites, you know, e either one. Let's be honest. Roguelike, roguelite, either one. Because I'm, I'm very curious. Because for me, I, I don't know, I've, I've never sat and actually just thought about the list. But, oh, oh, he's charmed right away. Shoot! Why are they charmed right away? Something to do with... The mustache, something, the the bow, the bow synergy. But like I haven't sat down and thought about. It. Oh, I got stuck. I got stuck inside that body. Are you kidding me? Boink. Like Freaky Friday. But my top five. Yeah, let, let me know your top top three if you can. Top five or top three, top five if you can. Um, mine is probably like Gungeon is in there. Obviously, is it my number one? Probably. Probably, yeah. I think it's my number one followed... I shouldn't be do, saying this so loosely. Maybe my number one followed by... Probably Binding of Isaac. Probably Binding, Binding of Isaac. Um, followed by probably... like uh, This is a super loose list. Oh, probably by Dark, Darkest Dungeon. Then after that... Oh, I just walked right into the pit! After that is kind of where I get my question marks, because I, I would maybe say Dicey Dungeons, and after that, I'm like, okay, Nuclear, Nuclear Throne? Pro no, pro like, honestly, I think probably I'd, I'd take Dead Cells over Nuclear Throne, probably, but I'm, I guarantee you I'm missing something. I guarantee I'm missing something. And and also there's like muddied water on like what makes a great roguelike. Or, or and not I mean obviously yeah, but I mean there's muddied water on what makes a roguelike. Roguelite even. Cause I, I don't know, like I would maybe I would maybe put Ziggurat. I would maybe put Ziggurat over uh over my fifth slot. I think, but it's making me realize that Dicey Dungeons is probably my number four. Probably my number four overall. Which is pretty cool, considering it's... I've, I've only been playing the alpha of it. But I have now dabbled with the full release at this point, and I, I quite like it. You know, I it's just... It, I was willing to put it at my number four just based off of the playing the alpha. Whoop. And uh, I think it cements its spot at number four in its full release. And in fact, who knows? Maybe, maybe at some point it could it could move up even more. But for for now, you know, like number four, that's a really big honor, I'd say. Like, or not a big honor. Oh, it's a big honor to be in my top four. No, I'm saying I'm more like a, it's it's a big deal. Why does it come out on this side? For a game to come out and and be able to challenge that top tier kind of rogue like I don't know yeah but I could see like what for other people I, I would what are some other contenders I could see people throwing risk of rain in there maybe I don't oh my god what a dumb dodge I could see people throwing risk of rain too in there I suppose but he doesn't do it for me it's definitely not top five territory for me uh, what else is even up there like what what else would I expect to see on the list this is these dodges are so so stupidly bad. I don't know. I'm very excited to see what you guys have to say. I've got no idea where this sucker went. There you go. Ooh. Ooh, the slowing. The slowing was quite effective there. And I, like I said, don't, don't, don't take it as gospel what I said right there as far as my favorite list. I'd, I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it more. 
I'd have to pull open a list. I could pull up my most played list on Steam, I suppose, huh? Let's see if anything, um, any anything that I didn't think of is on there. Um, let's see. I don't want to. I don't want to spend too long on it, but I can go to my profile here, see if there's anything else, because I know that pe people have asked me this quite a bit. And I'm, if I'm asking you guys, I want to have the answer to it here. I'll let. Well, I'll play the darn game while it takes forever to load. Oh. So this uh, this synergy makes them leave like an AOE blast on the ground, which is actually really really cool. After they die. All right, here's my list. My list came up. All right, sorted by playtime. Here we go. Enter the dungeon. If it's just based off of playtime, my list would be Enter the Gungeon, Binding of Isaac, Ziggurat, Darkest Dungeon, followed by... I mean, the original Binding of Isaac, then. Slay the Spire! Why didn't I put... I didn't put Slay the Spire in there! That's my number five. What do you mean I didn't put Slay the, Sp Slay the Spire? It's definitely... Oh, th oh, that's challenging. Oh, that's challenging. Okay, Dicey Dungeons and Slay the Spy are competing for, for slot four. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's tough, man. I can't believe I didn't put that one in there. But then, yeah, I got Nuclear Throne, and then Dead Cells in order. And then followed by Dungeons of Dreadmore, followed by Dungeon Souls. Yeah, we're getting into a little bit more, uh, a little bit more obscure territories there beyond that as far as my just literally if we were basing it on playtime being the only thing that mattered oh my god these dodges though all right what else we got yeah and after that like i started to there's not a whole lot of roguelikes on my top list Steriden. Steriden's very good. I would not call Into the Breach a roguelike. FTL is a roguelike, right? Oh, that's challenging. That's up there in the in the big big boys. If it is classified as one, that's definitely up there with the big boys. I feel like it's more of like a puzzle. Puzzle strategy though. But those would very likely oh man. If those count, if those two count. That makes the list really challenging. Because I adore both of them. I do like Into the Breach more than FTL, maybe. Maybe. Just a little bit. FTL is amazing, though. Whoop! Challenging, challenging, challenging. Why are we so cursed? I know that that's just because the jam Jamomancer. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very interested. Uh, give, give me your top roguelikes and tell me, and tell me why. Top five if you can. Top three otherwise. And, uh, and tr give me, a, give me a why if you can. You know, like if you already answered it, go back and edit it. Uh, give, if you can, give me a why. I'm very, I'm very curious. Because for mine, I feel like it's just. Obviously, like Gungeon and Isaac are up there for me the most. Because, I mean, I, I like. I slightly prefer the action aspect of a of, of a roguelike, like an action roguelike, where you you know a, a twin stick shooter roguelike immediately gets a little bit of a boost for me, just because it's probably my preferred method of play. But I do love strategy as well. Dead Cells is just it, it really does exist on its on its own. And it really ga oh, gains a lot of points for that. Like, being almost playing like a fighting game. I don't know. It's it's Has anything been done quite like it? It's because it's, yeah, it's a roguelike Metroidvania. But done in a way, like, you wouldn't think that that would work. You wouldn't think those two things would work together. You'd think one of those things would be absolutely, like, destroyed in translation but I don't think that it is I, I don't think that like you would think how could you have a metroidvania with any kind of weight 
wait to the Metroidvania aspects in the world where you have permadeath, but it works. It works and it works well. Um, one game that I wish was... I, I hate... I just, it's a bummer. One game that I wish was better, that I I thought could have could have been right up there for me. But there was just some aspects of it that just didn't stick with me right, is uh, Swords of Ditto. Being kind of like the first roguelike to try to take on like a Legend of Zelda formula, kind of. Really? Like, deeply? I, I, I don't know. It, it would have... It, it, it could have been great, but... It just didn't work well enough. It, it's it's what I'm talking about with Dead Cells, how you would think that the um, the Metroidvania aspect wouldn't have any weight to it because of the roguelike, the permadeath. You would think that the world of the, a, a randomized world of Legend of Zelda wouldn't work because it it inherently needs to have some weight and some curation to it. We really want that wind-up gun. I really want that. Because the synergy with it is killer. Uh, but... Unfortunately, Swords of Ditto, I think that it's, the, it's like the Dead Cells conundrum, but it didn't but it didn't pan out. So much so that they created an update for it recently that effectively completely strips out the uh, the roguelike elements. Meaning, like, it must have, you know, like, it must have been a, a common complaint, you know? To have the mode that just completely strips out all the roguelike elements. And that I think that people like it more now or something. I don't know. I haven't gone back to it. I haven't gone back to it because I wanted the roguelike aspects to work. It's interesting because it has like random, it has randomized dungeons and like you get your items in like I think random orders. The closest thing to it is like if you were playing a Link to the Past randomizer, which it is a thing that's quite popular. And it, it, it worked, but just, it, yeah, I don't know. The persistent elements, I guess, maybe weren't big enough or something. I'm not sure. But that one was one that I saw it coming out, and I was getting the vibes before it came out. I was like, this is going to do it for me. This is going to be one of my top five. I could feel it. But it came out, and it just, yeah, it just it didn't quite, it didn't do it for me, and I, it was very disappointing. But, may I, you know, maybe I'll check, check out the update. I believe a lot of things have been changed for it. I love the art style. I love the sound. Like the music, the whole spiel. Uh, sure. Nail gun. Hey, oh, we got the synergy sucker. It's not even bad, man. Not even bad. Thank you for giving me a tool. I would actually kind of like to keep it, to be honest. We're already on the fourth floor, and I haven't even answered any Discord questions because I've been answering my own questions. We got snowball. It's hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's nice. Boop. But yeah, to, I mean, top five roguelike. It's it's a it's because it's a gold mine topic for me. I could I could uh, I could go for hours. Like on the on the topic last in the last episode of starting a podcast, I think that would like that'd be an easy easy topic for me. Easy 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 peasy to uh, to go on for hours hours hours. I could. Boy, oh boy! I didn't even—I didn't even ask last time. Last time I asked for topics for a podcast. Append your uh, your top roguelike list. Edit edit your comment. Go back, edit your comment if you already made one, and say, would you would you listen to a podcast? Like, if I made a podcast, like an example topic would be like talking with someone else about kind of doing like a deep dive on roguelikes in general, and like deep dive of maybe like a top a top five list from both both parties. And, um, you know, and then doing a deep dive on it. Like, that wouldn't be the whole podcast, but that, you know, would be, like, kind of a flavor. Is that something that you you would be interested in watching, listening to? It would, you know, it would just be, like, if I did it, it'd probably be, like, an hour podcast once a week or something. Like, not, not a whole big commitment or anything. Be way easier to keep up on than enter the gungeon, I'll tell you that much. Whoop. I don't know. I've, I've always been interested in trying it, but... Only if, only if the interest is there, I suppose, I guess. This is killer, this gun. Especially now that we got the snow bullets. I'm loving it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, I think I just got another Who's That Pokemon. 
Oh no, it's just my a picture of my cat being okay. My guys, I, I'm. If you missed that episode a long time ago, my girlfriend has gotten into Pokemon Go, and um, every once in a while sends me a a screenshot saying, "Who is this? Who is this?" And it's a silhouette of someone far out, and she's wondering if it's worth going to going to get. But unfortunately, who's that Pokemon today? It's my cat Benji, and he is my favorite favorite Pokemon. Whoop. You know what? Isn't the demon head synergy pretty good? No, no, no. I'm thinking of um I'm thinking of the synergy with huh. Oh god, it's good. Yup. I'm thinking of the the synergy with Oh man, which one? Pulse cannon? I think it's pulse cannon. That yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that summons the the demon head. So it's more of a, it's a pulse cannon synergy, not a demon head synergy. Oh, freak out! Well, it's you know what? It's a little late for that, anyways. If we get two keys, we'll probably pick that up because you know it gives us the, the mimic two necklace gives us the ability to get guaranteed pedestal mimics, which are free items. You know, free items for the potential downside of losing health. Which is a huge element of, of roguelikes that I like. I love I love games that have risk reward elements. That's one thing that I always have liked in Isaac over Gungeon. That that little aspect. That being said, I shocker. I I do prefer Enter the Gungeon to Binding of Isaac, but I love Binding of Isaac as well. Like if, if Gungeon didn't exist, ooh, baby, I'd probably Binding of Isaac would probably be in its spot right there as far as like what I'd be playing. If it didn't, if it never existed. Uh, I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Not it. Not even worth trying. Every time I try to do it, I get hit in the bum. Every time. All right. Ooh. Stretch. Okay. Who are we taking to the fight? Who are we taking? It strikes me as. Kill pillars for some reason. Oh, it could easily be the wallmonger. Yeah, I don't know why. I could. I feel it. Yeah, I, I really got hit by that. You kidding me? You kidding me? I don't want to kill one of them with that. This is not working very well. Not working very well, especially because that getting a little bit of frame drops due to the. Uh, our lovely, lovely scouter. This actually is pretty good, I think. It's gonna give us a little bit of things that look like frame stutters, but they're not actually. It's because the dog slap does a freeze frame for some reason. Just to try to make it look like a critical, I guess. Bloop, 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 bloop. Blip, 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 blip. But yeah, oh my god, this is this is extra good. I forgot because the, we get the scrambler synergy as well. This is a very good one to get on on this character. Ice, okay, hell yeah. Frost bullets. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. How about you? We already found the secret room, didn't we? No, we didn't. I was expecting a catch. Uh, I suppose the teleporter would be just more useful, huh? We did actually get enough keys if we want to get the, the mimic thing. Do we want it? Sure. Bring it on, suckers. These big rooms are... I would think would be the best way to uh, handle these situations with the lament there, because I think it just it summons the same amount of enemies despite being a much bigger room. Let's answer the Discord questions here. Pick Pixel asks, "Why don't you ever do rainbow runs if you invented them?" You know, a good question. And I think it just boils down to the fact that I have found a lot of fun in doing the uh, 
the streak. I, despite, like, you would think that, okay, you're limiting yourself. Why would you be, why would it make it more fun? I, but, like, having this, the overarch, like, the overarching goal uh, of keeping the streak alive, even though it's gotten to the point where it's very unlikely that I die, there's still that, there's still that sense of stakes around, you know? I still have that sense of stakes. And the reason I don't do Rainbow Runs is strictly just because I don't upload more than one episode of the main series of Gungeon a day. And I just want to keep the streak alive. Uh, maybe uh, maybe at 300 I'll take a break and do a couple Rainbow Runs. Because I don't know how, I don't know how many people know. Like any, anybody who came from after Farewell to Arms know that I made the Rainbow Mode or not. I don't know. But it is, it is true. It is a true fact. You can go check the wiki. I ain't lying. This is not uh, my dad works at Nintendo situation. I didn't get, They didn't do any kind of shout out for me, which was a bit of a, a bummer, but I shouldn't have ever expected it. What I, what I wish would have happened, what I think would have been fun, is if, um, is if Bowler, like he has all those little nicknames, all those little nicknames that he leaves on his note. Would have been cool if maybe there was like a little bit of a, a, a Rito reference in there. Whoop. Boyo. Would have been kind of neat. But, you know, I, I don't know if they... I don't know if Dondrell even knows that I made him or not. Like, they took him... They took it as a reference and they... In the post where they talked about him for the first time, they said it was a community... Uh, a community created run. They said it was a community created run. And I don't know. Like, a lot of... There's a... A lot of mis uh, misassociation from people thinking that Huts made it, which is not. I mean, I mean, had nothing to do with Huts. Nothing to do with Huts. But there's a yeah misassociation for some reason. People think he made it. But I'm not like oh how dare he or how dare the community. It's just like that's a thing on YouTube that just should. It just has to stop. Like just like I. Because the same thing happened with the duct tape every gun run. I, I I did another one recently for episode 100. I did the duct tape every gun run again. And multiple comments said, you got this from Huts. You got this from Huts. And that is just... Fact, first, of all, it's, first of all, it's incorrect because I, I did for that as well. I was also the first one to do a duct tape every gun run. Uh, it was not. It was not huts. Uh, but even though, even so, who even would care? Like, why would it matter? Why is it worth? Uh, why is it worth? You know, getting up in arms about. Most people have, have like s s not done that kind of thing. But just like, no, you, you don't need to. You wouldn't need to say it even if it was true because it's not like I'm. I'm not stealing anything. And like, you, he can get the. The fact of the matter is, huts didn't steal it from me either. I'm sure what happened is somebody commented a suggestion and said, I would like to see you do this. And they just didn't say where they got it from. You know, like that's not Hutz stealing it from me. That's just ideas being spread throughout a community. And it's not worth, it's not worth getting upset at people about, you know, I have no ill will in any regards towards Hutz at all. Not even, not even a little. Whoop. Whoop. Not even at all. So it's just like, I, because I, I would never be like, yeah, he's, he stole X, Y, Z or, uh, you know, whatever. I would never, I would never say that. So when if, whenever anybody says like, oh, a hut, Hut's made X, Y, Z, I'm not like, I'm not never mad at him. And I'm never mad, I'm never mad at the people saying it either because they're just like, don't comment something like that. At the very least, the very least you can do is go search, you know, like search on YouTube to see what the first one is before saying something like that. At the that's like the bare minimum you can do, you know, before saying that somebody stole something. And then you can just decide to not say that somebody stole something anyways because, you know, like there's some situations like I'm not talking, I'm not talking uh, you know, like literal literal art theft like um you know or, or anything like that or just literal re-uploads 
Obviously, that's, you know, that's a completely different story. If you're just literally just, you know, like, if I were to upload... If someone were to literally copy this exact video file, upload it on their YouTube channel, and say they made it, or, or just or reaped benefits from it, that's a, obviously a completely different story, you know? That's a completely different story, but ideas, you know, it's it's a... It's, it, it's a free world, you know? It, it's true. Does that mean that sometimes you shouldn't shout out where you got an idea from or something? No, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do that, because like that can be a good idea to do that, you know? It can, it can foster, a, foster a, a more healthy communi community, more, more, you know, combined community, everything like that. But, uh, I don't know. Not everything has to be a scandal. Not everything has to be stolen. Not everything has to have come from somewhere else. You know what? If we drop this gun, if this gun deletes itself, what happens? First of all, let's... Uh, thanks. Let's do that, and then... I don't know if we... Like, do we lose the curse? When it deletes itself, do we lose the curse or what? But yeah, I, I'll, I'm, to answer the question, I would maybe do, I'm, I'll maybe do rainbow runs at some kind of like special. Maybe I'll take take a break from the streak for like a couple days, just like a handful of days at some point. Please be something good. Please be worth it. Hey, it could be. Okay, I didn't actually know if this one was going to be a mimic or not. Didn't know if it was scripted differently. Orange Guanstone. It's not exciting. But it's not bad either. But it's definitely not exciting. I've been really actually liking the Sunlight Javelin today with all the synergies. Look at that. Ice Bird. If we get hit, I will... Use my lament. I don't want to use it until unless we get hit. If I can help it, because we may lose, you may lose a heart or half a heart by uh, by using the lament. Effectively, you know, losing our uh, our our master round that we would get. Hook. Looking pretty good though, as far as not doing that. So, all right. We could do it now. That wouldn't be a good idea, but we could we could literally do it now. Sunlight Javelin. You know what would be cool is if Sunlight Javelin's yellow fire set enemies on fire that normally are immune. I wonder if it does. I don't think so. I don't think so. And this is definitely a two cycle. Definitely a two cycle. We'll do the lament. It, uh, what are the odds? What are the odds? I feel like they're relatively high. Knowing my luck, it's just gonna be. Uh... Okay. Well, we we killed them. We didn't get hurt. We also didn't get any real benefit. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, if there even if there was anything for sale, I wouldn't go for it. It's worth using the mantra, I'd say. We don't need it to be anything good either. In fact, like some of the best stuff are bad guns. I'm actually gonna get rid of the battery. The synergy kind of bores me. I like it. Like it's good, but it's also boring. Sling has no synergies? Say what? Say what? Are you serious? That, this shocks the Rito. This shocks the man. Whoop. Whoop. Fair enough. Wait, I thought you could make this jump. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You can make this jump. I know that. 
Maybe you can, like, very, very barely. That's speedrun strats to practice that. Burrito and Raps race the same maps. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm gonna use the sunlight jab. I did, I, I dig it today. I dig it. it it's pretty slick looking. I like the AOE effect of it. Blood high millimeters, not actually, not actually being very helpful. But if this is how the gun was all the time, I, uh, yeah, it'd be OP as hell if it left that fire circle. Like it's such, some of the synergies are so cool that I almost wish the base gun was that way. But then obviously the synergy wouldn't be so cool. But like a tone, if there if there was a toned down version of this, but I guess you would say what? The, the toned down version of that is what? Pox cannon, I guess. I suppose it exists kind of sort of a little bit already. But I, I don't know. I dig it. I'm digging it a lot. Boop. Is it homing? No. It just looked like it looked like it spun a little weird. Like we got ghost bullets too. Oh, you know what? Ghost bullets are making me dig it more too. That's a that's a big part of it. That's a big big part of it. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Get him with the laser beam, boy. Boy. Get him with the laser beam. Whoop. Thank you. Alright. Good deal. Good deal. I'm, I'm digging it a lot. God, the visuals on it are so cool. Oh. God, I freaking love it, though. You don't have to. You got. I got. You got to freaking love the visuals, though, right? Right? Because I know I'm. I'm hard on it as a as a base weapon. I'm hard on it as a base weapon, but it's good. With the synergies, it's good. 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 I'd say, like on a normal run, if I got ghost bullets, I'd be. I'd be really happy with it too. I think it'd be good enough. It's just the fact that, like, maybe it's the thought of the fact that it's a permanent fire, on a on a gun that takes so long to charge it kind of just makes me think of nor normally it makes me think of oh come on you stinker stinker supreme makes me think of green fire pitchfork synergy which i think i like i think is better than base sunlight javelin i think i think you know, because it's just like you have to charge up a long time. Well, not a lo not that long, but you have to charge up a decent amount of time to the point where another gun with that amount of charge would just kill the enemy. And you're putting a damage over time effect. You could also like, I, I feel like damage over time effects are best done as like an alternate weapon that you quick switch to. And that's, you know, like Pitchfork. Pitchfork is not a bad gun to use as a secondary in my opinion. And Sunlight Javelin, it, Sunlight Javelin does not work as a secondary. You don't, charge weapons are not really secondary weapons, in my opinion. Like weapons you hold, hold and then switch to. It's not really one of those, I, as a charge weapon. I, secondary weapons have gotta be fast firing, you know, just something that apply, like a, like a dueling laser, like a, you know, plague pistol, flare gun to an extent. I mean, a player gun. If it's not a su supplementary gun, then what is it, I guess? A secondary gun. But, yeah. I don't know. But I, I dig it with the synergies. The the AoE that it leaves makes it so the, uh, the charging that you do has a bigger payout. I mean, like, look at this. Look at this sucker. That AoE, it's, like, it's a big deal. Big deal. Uh, oh, I didn't think we were going to get him in the pit. Exciting. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Why'd I do it? Oh, just keep it Magnum? I don't want the Magnum. I don't need no stinking Magnum. What have I done? Just going to get him. Who is he? Who is he? Where is he? Why is he shooting from so far away? 
Okay, that's definitely dead end. We're getting into slightly dangerous territory. However, I do have... Uh, we got the Dark Souls item that's, you know, like, I don't think it's going to be very good at this point. At this point, if we died, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like we'd have to, if we get close to death, something that would maybe be a good idea would be, like, what? Going back up to one of these rooms we haven't cleared and dying in it? I guess that's a strat, huh? I've never, I've never tried to have a strat with it because it just, it, quite frankly, like it's gone through a lot of iter iterations. And originally it was pretty bad, I think. Or was it really good? I don't know. I don't think they nerfed it ever. That's not worth a blank. I don't know why I did that. I don't think they ever nerfed it. I think they, I think they've only buffed it. But it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's risky. It's risky. You never want to use it. Like, you know, unless you've got cigarettes or something. Sorry, excuse me, cigaroons. Unless you got the cigaroons or something. I feel like there's not a lot of draw to, like, abuse it. But maybe I just haven't thought of the right way to handle it. Maybe that's just it. Oh, I was hoping I was going to get a twofer. Hup, hup. Help. Pierce him. Pierce him. Pierce him and eat him. Ah, the good old forever fires. Okay. But yeah, see, like, look at that. The, the AoE is what makes it right now. Because we didn't even have to focus on that guy. He just died. He just died. We didn't even have to look at him. That guy's going to just die, too. All right. All right. Pretty slick. I love the synergies that really... And, you know, huge props to Farewell to Arms. I mean, props to AG and V. But Farewell to Arms, I think, probably did it more. Like, taking guns that just kind, kind of sucked... Or just weren't as good as they should be. And then uh, giving them a synergy that made him made him usable. I like that a lot. I like that a hell of a lot. We only have four hearts going into this fight, which is actually quite low. If we get kind of low on health, if we take like a couple of hits from this, it would maybe be strategy to die. No, 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 no. That would probably glitch the game. If we went back to the beginning and we died... I think that, and, and like we jumped in a pit over by the entrance, I feel like, I feel like that would cause a, a glitch. Here's the thing though, the glitch is really not that big of a deal. I just take, I've been taking uh, all these hits just because I've, you know, we've been going a little podcasty style, a little bit more podcasty. Uh oh, this is actually going to be a problem, we're going to get grabbed, we're going to get grabbed, and we're going to take damage, yep, I knew it. My gun's already here. The gun's all here. Uh-oh. Okay, the frame stutter from the dog slap is going to be problematic. Got to keep it in mind. It's like playing with a it's, it's like playing with a with with frame skips or like, you know, playing with a slightly choppy computer. But it's our, it's definitely our best boss killer. You know what? I feel like maybe we need to take Sunlight Javelin and show it the respect that we've not been giving it. It's not a boss killer. That's for sure. Oh, uh... Uh-oh. This could get very bad. I mean, I'm, I'm not worried that much about dying. I don't think that we're actually going to have a problem. But... Yeah, and we, I guess we should be further from the enemy. Huh. Because there's no bullets. This is not a boss killer. In fact, like, I... I 
really want bloody nine millimeter shots to come out. He can't be set on fire, like, right? Oh no, we got killed. That is that. Get out of here, Mr. Lich. Mr. Lich. Puts us on a lovely streak of 286. And that is going to do it for today. After this, if you get me, I'm not sure what else you're going to watch. Consider starting the new Dicey Dungeon series. Came out today, episode one. Do give it a look. Very, very good game. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Extra special thank you to Outsu on the Team Gungeon tier of the Patreon. Huge frequent thank you for making my dreams come true, Patreon supporters. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching, though. Thank you, thank you. Subscribe for daily Into the Gungeon videos and plenty more. Join the Discord to ask questions that I'll answer like I did in today's video. And then follow on Twitch.tv slash Catch me streaming games like Gungeon Live. Thank you, thank you. See you next time.